finish lines or on the margins of your preparation. Students, we keep the finish line supra gingival as much as possible because supra gingival finish lines are definitely easy to capture in your impression, easy to be prepared and easy to be cleaned by the patient. But in some of the conditions, we have to go supra sub gingival. Sub gingival finish lines like in case of root caries, aesthetics, you have to go sub gingival but only when it is indicated. Now, these are some of the crown margins, some of the finish lines that we have. The number one is called as the feather edge finish line. So, this finish line is going to be very thin. It is considered to be the one of the best finish lines that we have for the cast full gold. But the problem is this finish line is very thin and easy chances of fracture. So, it is a chamfer that is a preferred finish line for cast full gold restoration. And it has sufficient marginal strength, the chamfer margin provides. While allowing the sliding joint at its periphery to minimize the gap between the tooth and the preparation. So, it's going to reduce the cement thickness at the margins. The number third we have the, now the shoulder margin is a 90 degree joint, a 90 degree margin. As we know, it's a finish line for all porcelain or the Emax uh, crown. And S strength of a porcelain is low. That's the reason a butt joint, a 90 degree shoulder is very important. Otherwise, it's going to break at the margin since porcelain is brittle. But for the cast metal, shoulder margin is considered to be one of the poorest finish line. Now, there are some cases when we give shoulder with a bevel. Bevel is like creating a slanting slope shoulder with a bevel. This design or this margin of finish line allows a sliding fit to occur at the margin because of the bevel. And shoulder with bevel margins are used mainly for proximal box of inlays and the occlusal shoulder of the mandibular three-fourth crown or the label margins of the PFMs, that is your metal fused to ceramics. When we are doing the study of uh, bridges, the crowns, PFMs, we'll also come across some of the terms like crown lengthening procedures. The so crown lengthening procedures are mainly done if you do not have enough to structure to give clearance for the biologic width. Now, what is biologic width here? So, if you look at the picture here, biologic width is the sum of supracrystal fibers, the junctional epithelium, and the gingival sulcus. It is around 3.07 mm, the biologic width that we have. You can see here, 1 mm for the sulcus, 1 for junctional epithelium, and 1 for fiber attachment. What's the importance of this biological width? When you are placing a crown, the margins of your crown should be clear of biologic width. That means you should give at least 3 mm clearance while you are placing a crown. The reason is that you don't want to encroach, you don't want to violate the biologic width because if your crown is resting on biological width, what will happen? You are encroaching on the junctional epithelium, encroaching on the fiber attachment and that will lead to recession. You can lose your teeth. It can cause mobility. So, that is very important for us to preserve the biological width while we are preparing a crown. If you don't have enough space to give clearance of 3 mm for the biological width, then you have to consider doing crown lengthening procedures. Crown lengthening is actually a surgical procedure which moves the alveolar crust 3 mm apical to the proposed finish line. Right? So, this 3 mm moving of the alveolar crest will provide the 3 mm clearance of the biological width and prevent any periodontal pathology. Now, there is one more term called as emergence profile. Now, what is emergence profile? In uh, uh, general terms, we can just say emergence profile is how your tooth is emerging from the gingiva at the alveolar crest level. Emergence profile is the, at the gingival one-third level. So, at the gingival one-third, you see the... Now, let us talk about what is emergence profile. Emergence profile is the axial contour that extends from the base of the gingival sulcus past the free gingival margin. So, emergence profile, you can say that how your crown is emerging from the gingiva at the alveolar crest level. You see exactly at the gingival one-third level, how your crown is emerging at that level. That is called as emergence profile. So, emergence profile, you want to keep flat. 0 degree emergence profile which is preferred or slightly under curtoot or slightly concave is also permissible. But we should never have a convex emergence profile because convex emergence profile will make it difficult for the student or the patient to maintain the oral hygiene. Now, if you see the features of the posterior PFM and the anterior PFM, so we will see the posterior uh, metal ceramic crown. You can see on the facial side, we are keeping a shoulder. That's a 90 degree joint. That helps in providing the marginal integrity right? 
it has to be 90 degree. We discussed already that porcelain is brittle. If it's not a bud joint, it's going to break there. On the proximal side, we are giving a chamfer. So chamfer is giving marginal integrity and the structural durability. You can see axial side, you are doing the lingual reduction. Lingual reduction has been providing retention resistance and also providing the structural durability. We are giving a wing design. Having a wing design preserves this two structure and also give retention and resistance. Also for the posteriors, we are giving a bevel on the functional cusp. Functional cusp which are the working cusp. For example, for maxi posterior, we have maxi lingual cusp are the working cusp. So giving a cusp bevel definitely also gives structural durability. Now the planar occlusal reduction. So when you are doing the reduction, we always do the biplanar reduction. We are not going to cut the tooth in one plane. So biplanar reduction makes it sure that we are not overcutting the tooth structure. Occlusal reduction, you have to do multiplanar reduction for the cusp because that's how the cusp normal anatomy, the normal contour is. The facial reduction on the axial side vertically that also give retention resistance and structural durability. For the entire PFM, we have the following features giving a radial shoulder that will give a periodontal preservation and structural durability. A chamfer design, that's the same for marginal integrity and periodontal preservation. Then the axial reduction, just like we are doing for posteriors, retention resistance and structural durability. And having the incisal notch design also help to give structural durability. The wish design, retention resistance and also for the preservation of the tooth structure.